Hey, welcome to Black Rocks Brewing. We're in Marquette, Michigan, testing bikes for the 2018 Bible of Bike Tests. And I'm here with John Weber and Ryan Cleek. And we rode the highly anticipated brand new Santa Cruz Nomad. And I actually rode it for a few months. I rode it before you guys did. Oh, must See? have been nice. Oh, it was, especially because I was in Crankworks. <laughs> this is a bike that I would have, I would very happily ride for a few months. Yeah. Like it's not an overwhelming big travel enduro bike. And it was the original overwhelming big travel enduro bike. Right. Uh, I mean, it's used to be the, yeah, this is a bike that you can charge, but yeah, you can kind of pedal it a little bit, you know, if you really are desperate. Yeah. I feel very differently about the way this thing yeah. pedals. You don't have to be so desperate. No, you don't, no. Yeah, like, I couldn't agree more. I mean, from my experience over the years, the Santa Cruz's VPP suspension always really, um, truly shine the brightest under their downhill bike application which really worked the best and any of the more pedaling oriented ones I wasn't exactly in love with however on this bike despite having 170 millimeters of travel front and rear it just was extremely efficient and it zipped uphill mm -hmm. really hid uh, the slack geometry and travel quite well that was the first of the things I didn't expect however when you pointed it downhill it just was equally as great I thought yeah I my first ride on this was kind of a big up and down out in the mountains in San Diego and I would take this over to Bronson in a second. Like it's so comfortable and so efficient climbing with. Mm -hmm. And there's two settings on this, there's a high and low. And I spent most of my time then and out here in the high setting. And you're not compromising because of the extra travel. And I don't think there's much compromise in the downhill as well. Oh, certainly not. Yeah. I, th I mean, I, I started with a spike in the high setting on the downhill and I just, it just did whatever I wanted it to do. I was immediately comfortable. I could place it where I needed to place it, which you can't do with all bikes that are this slack. Mm -hmm. And uh, at speed, it, it's just a, it's a plow. You know, you can just, you can hit anything at any speed and any angle, and it'll just charge through. I agree. When I, as I was riding it, it came to mind like this is kind of like a high performance trophy truck. You can just, you can haul ass, but yet you can just mash anything in, in the way. Mm -hmm. But yet, it doesn't. That doesn't mean it was so long or unstate or unagile. Yeah. It was extremely um, fun and playful, mm -hmm. but yet really held uh, stuck to the ground and hype on the gnarly terrain. Yeah, I think this bike would be super fun in the park. I think it's also an enduro worthy race bike. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you can take it for your trail ride and still have fun. I mean, it's not a trail bike. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have quite that same like fun liveliness of a trail bike. And it doesn't climb like a trail bike. It's still an all mountain bike, mm -hmm. but it's it's a really well rounded one. I think my, maybe the biggest compliment I could probably give the new Nomad is that after I set the sag, brake levers, tire pressure, it just kind of disappeared beneath me. I wasn't mm -hmm. thinking about the suspension. I wasn't thinking about um, what's new about this bike. I was just able to focus on the terrain, have fun, and then I got to the bottom of the, of the, of the trails and the descents, and that's when it really sets in. It's like, man, I had a great time riding this. Yeah, but if you do want to think about the suspension, you've got options, right? So it, the one we rode had the RockShox Super Deluxe Air, mm -hmm. and you can also get it with a Super Deluxe coil at certain price points. I spent some time on it with both, and the coil has all the advantages you would expect. A little more supple off the top, a little more linear, but I'm just so used to having the tunability of an AirShock and having the volume adjustability, and I think that's the form that this bike shines in to me. And air shocks are getting so good, and they kind of had air shocks in mind when they designed this bike. So that's the way I would ride it. And also, you compare it to bikes like the Da Vinci Spartan that we also rode. Mm -hmm. Similar numbers, that bike is really a ground hugging kind of machine. Mm -hmm. You can tune this to be the same thing, but you can also tune it to be a little more lively and poppy if you want it to be. So yeah. inside the new frame, you can fit the you can fit a water bottle actually for a lot of riders. Look for that, and then it has some other cool features um, like a threaded BB and it's actually using, um, well, it's actually specced with their new carbon wheels made mm -hmm. by Santa Cruz. Yeah, and so what, what's your guys' experience been like with those wheels? I, I thought they felt, I thought they had a really nice ride quality on this bike and they felt stiff, but also not too stiff that you were getting both offline. For a while, Santa Cruz had a partnership with Envy and like that was their carbon wheel option. The Santa Cruz wheels have a much less expensive buy-in if you want to upgrade to them and they're high tech. Like they didn't just, just pick them out of a catalog. They engineered them in-house, and they're designed to be a little more supple. They have a little bit lower profile and uh, have a more strong spoke bed. And the coolest thing is they have a lifetime warranty. Because you're the original owner, you buy these wheels, 
they will replace them for life, which is a great thing because I have broken two of them. <laughs> yeah. um, well, now, shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and neither of them have been in pinch flats. The, I, I didn't bottom it out, I didn't tear the rim in half, I hit something really hard, there's a crack that went from the bead seat down to the spoke, and if, any, if that were to happen to anybody, they would get brand new wheels. On the other hand, I've, I've rode these wheels on the high tire LT for a good period of time and had plenty of hard bottom outs on them, and I didn't crack any, but mm -hmm. I'm also not a wheel cracking kind of guy. So. so, I mean, top to bottom, this is one of the, the few bikes I've ridden this week that I just was, I would love to take home with me and keep riding, and it would, it's, fun. it's at home in the bike park, it's at home in a race, and it's, you know, and in an all day ride works out well. And they recently added an aluminum version with this linkage and this frame design. And you can get into this bike for well under four grand. Uh, the carbon one starts at 4,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, for something this cutting edge, man, you can't go wrong. And we're on the, the CC, the carbon, the high end carbon frame. And you can probably get a comparable spec on the, through the Santa Cruz website and see the options with the, with the lower end C frame. So this has been probably the most significant evolution in the Nomad since its origin, and we were all pretty stoked on it. So if you want to check out any other Bible of Bike Test videos, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube.